Older adults can find our digital world overwhelming. Actually, so can people of all ages. Technology surrounds us and it's continually evolving. All the changes can be intimidating and many people doubt their abilities to learn and enjoy technology, cutting themselves off from vital links to their community of family, friends, and neighbors. They'll ask themselves, am I smart enough to master a smartphone? Is an iPad the same as a tablet? And how is it different from a laptop? What exactly is social media? And is it really just something for young people? The temptation is to avoid learning the answers to those questions. But it can be hard to live the life you want to live without knowing how to operate the many touchscreens and keyboards that are filling our world. From the banking machines that are more convenient than a trip inside the bank, to the video chats you could be having with the faraway grandchildren, there are so many advantages to becoming more tech savvy. And remember, there was a time when our televisions seemed like a challenging piece of technology, and now it's a must-have device, a conduit for news, entertainment, and connectedness to the larger world. And the same is true about these smaller screen devices that you've been hesitant to try. More and more, it's essential to know how to log on, search the web, and have a digital conversation with the rest of the world. So you don't want to find yourself on the other side of the digital divide. And that's why I'm here. I'm EJ Vizzy, and I am the project coordinator of Age Friendly Teaneck. Our organization's overall goal is to help the township of Teaneck become as wonderful a place to grow old as it has been to grow up. And part of our mission here with you today is to make sure older adults can remain engaged in their communities rather than being isolated in their homes. And I know what many of you might be thinking, most of your lives were lived without the modern gadgets of today, and you did just fine, thank you very much. But times have changed, and especially in this COVID-19 era, there's a lot that technology can do for you. And that's why we've joined together with the Teaneck Public Library and the Township's cable access provider to produce a series of programs aimed at helping you open more digital doors. We want to help make sure that the township you love is accessible to you within the walls of your home. Now in this first episode, I will focus on helping you become fluent in the language of technology. And maybe before the pandemic, you never heard of Zoom. Now it's a household word. And whether you're a complete beginner who needs to learn the basics, or you're a novice who wants to increase your digital capabilities, the first step is to make sure you understand the jargon. And I'm here to provide you with some of those definitions. Let's first start with an explanation of a desktop computer. A desktop computer usually comes with separate components that make up a whole of a desktop. It comprises of a screen, which is also called a monitor, a mouse, a keyboard, and a computer box itself, which is also called a tower. Many newer versions of desktop computers, which are known as all-in-ones, combine the monitor and tower into a single unit with a separate keyboard. It relies on a main power connection with a power cable. A laptop computer, also known as a notebook, is a single box that opens up like a clamshell with the monitor on top and a keyboard and mouse below. The mouse can either be a separate component, like with a desktop, or you can use the flat trackpad near the keyboard. Laptops are convenient in that they are portable. And in addition to having a power cable, it also runs on battery power, which can last for a number of hours. A tablet computer is a lightweight, wireless, and portable personal computer with a touchscreen flat surface. The tablet is usually smaller than a notebook computer, but larger than a smartphone. And many people call all tablets iPads, though they're not fully wrong. It's the same way most can call cotton swabs Q-tips and not, well, cotton swabs. Tablets can also serve as a camera, 
with some in the front and also in the rear, with photography and video capabilities. It also has a battery that can last a number of hours, but has a cable for charging directly into a power source. Now a smartphone is a cellular phone device that also has computer capabilities. Similar to a tablet, they do have a touchscreen camera for still photography and video recording. And even if you don't have the fanciest, newest, or most expensive iPhone or Android, a flat surface touchscreen is considered a smartphone. If your phone flips open, it can be considered a smartphone with some internet connectivity, but most likely it's not. Now for most people, smartphones are used as portable personal computers since they are able to connect to the internet, run software applications, and allow you to do most of the things you can do on a personal computer. Now that we, now that we know all computers come in all shapes and sizes, some to keep at home and others you can carry around, let's discuss the wonderful ways you can use them. So I'd like to introduce you to some of my friends, some of my colleagues on the age-friendly Teaneck team. Um, and they're older adults who don't claim that they're experts by any means, but I think that they really should be proud of how they have managed technology through the pandemic. So um, I hear that one of the first things Ellen was trying to figure out, I think you used to use your tablet um, and you were trying to figure out how to get Netflix on your TV. Can you talk about that a bit? Basically, I had a very old tablet, circa 2013, and it just really wasn't working. And I thought, instead of having to watch movies on my phone, you know, a little teeny tiny screen, I was wondering, is there a way to do this so I'm not sitting in front of the computer also? And I read about Roku. And so I ordered a little teeny tiny Roku stick. It's about four or five inches long. And you kind of plug it into your your TV. And then, you know, magic happens and you watch movies from Netflix or Amazon Prime on your television, much better than watching on a little teeny tiny screen. Um, and so Jackie, can you tell me about some of your experiences through the pandemic, some of the things that you felt you needed to adapt to? Brave she is because <laughs> I have been able to use computers at work and I felt very facile about what I had to do, but not with any new technology. Fortunately, where I worked, there was an IT department and if something had to be done, they would explain it. But all of a sudden, I'm not working there and it's a pandemic and we're age-friendly, all the age-friendly communities were getting together. We used to do it um, to in person. person. Now we had to do it by Zoom. And I think a month or two into the pandemic, I had heard about Zoom. I didn't think it was anything I would ever need to do. I'm perfectly self-sufficient, but we had to do it. It was part of our job. And I was really, all of a sudden we were doing more and more Zooming and it became um, more and more natural to me. And I uh, I decided that there are a group of women that I never get to see anymore, and I wanted to see them. So we started a group, and I'm hosting it, and oh, I know great. I know what to do. Um, Marsha, would you be able to tell us about some of the ways you've been using Zoom or the ways you've been connecting to people on the internet? But I think that the major thing that I have gotten is maybe too busy, but my life does not feel empty and lonely anymore. I live alone and I'm not old young sweethearts. I am almost 92. Wow. So oh, no. no one would believe it, Marcia. No. no. And um, it's beginning to believe it to me too now. But but I what it means for me on Zoom is that. I do a class every weekday, an exercise type class called Feldenkrais, 
which has been very helpful. Then I have about 12 organizations that interest my weird mind. And they are all offering so many interesting talks and webinars, whatever that means, and all kinds of information every day. So today, this is only my third one, and I have one tonight that's a little bit more fun, not so much educational, that's going to deal with the Esopus River where I used to do whitewater paddling. So Very cool. I look forward to that. 